All right, guys, we're back with the 87 El Camino build. Now, in this video, we're going to go over the brackets, the different types, different options, and everything you need to know so you pick the right brackets and the right parts you need. Now, the um, obviously, <clears throat> the cheapest route to go on the brackets is if you got a junkyard engine, and for some reason, um, it came with all the accessories. If they fit in your configuration on your vehicle, that's going to be the cheapest route to go. So, for example, <clears throat> on our crate engine, it came with this truck bracket here. Now this obviously has the correct spacing for that crankshaft. The crankshaft pulley is what's gonna determine your spacing for your brackets. Now there is three types. There is one that's really short that the pulley will probably be like right here. There's a middle one that's rarely used and there's a longer one for the trucks and I believe the 2010 Camaros and older. So this is, that's what we have, it's way out here, right? So whenever we put the alternator, the pulley is gonna be way out here line up with this one here. This one here just for air conditioning. So if you have an optional um, vehicle with air conditioning, it'll have a belt that goes here. You do the compressors mounted here and then that belt runs air conditioning. But we're gonna focus on this one here because that's the main accessory belt that drives everything, your alternator, your water pump, <clears throat> your power steering. So as you can see, we have the truck pulley system here and this is a, for the truck itself, the truck um, accessory system. But our issue is this one runs the truck power steering pump, which will be sticking out here. And I believe it's probably gonna run into that. Um, and here's our lines for our power steering. So trying to get that to right here and make them twist. It's gonna be a pain in the butt. And it's probably not gonna be possible. So we're gonna get rid of this stuff. Now the next cheapest option that you have if you're trying to be on a budget will probably be ICT billet, or you can get a knockoff of ICT billet and hopefully it works. But if you want quality and you want to make sure it fits, ICT billet is the way to go. I've been using these when I started doing all the swaps before I started going into the premium stuff. Now, if you want better stuff, the next upgrade from that will probably be like a Holly kit that comes with like the mid mount kit or um, high mount kit or whatever you need that has the correct spacing. Because the Holly kit combines everything together so everything's spaced correctly. You just gotta make sure it fits your vehicle. After that, the next kit from that would probably be like a Wagner or something like higher end, like the Chevelle has. Chevelle has. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of the differences uh, between that and this one. I'm gonna go ahead and install that just to show you um, what it looks like after it's installed. All right guys, so here's the ICT billet kit. Now, one thing I really like is their instructions are pretty clear and they're in color. So they didn't try to save money on that and just do them in black and white with some crappy copies. Now, one thing you notice too is also that everything's labeled with the size of it and the length of it because there's some stuff that looks almost the same size, but you can tell it's a little bit off. So those spacers, <clears throat> um, they also provide a tape measure here on the side, like a ruler. So if you don't have a dial caliper to measure the exact length of these spacers, you just ballpark it off the ruler on the side. They have one over here too for millimeters. So for example, this bolt here, it says uh, M10 by 80 millimeters, right? Grab a bolt, see if it's 80 millimeters. This one is about 120. So obviously that's the wrong bolt. So grab a different bolt. That one is around, that one's 80 millimeters. So this will be the bolt you're looking for. So it's pretty easy guys. If you guys ever put uh, furniture together from Ikea or put some Lego sets together, it's not gonna be that hard. So let me go ahead and mount this up and then I'm gonna show you guys what to look for after you install it. I got so the brackets and everything is mounted up. So it's a good thing I did this because now that I'm checking everything, apparently our, where our power steering is at, that pulley is not gonna work because it's gonna hit the bottom here. I thought we had enough clearance, obviously we don't. So this won't get pushed under. So I'm about to order a different bracket and I will keep you guys posted. But the reason I did this is um, to show you guys. So for example, this is, how it comes, the bracket, right? So a lot of people like to powder coat them, paint them, or do whatever they want. Now, if you do that, it's gonna affect how your alternator works, and I'm gonna show you real quick. All right, so this is the alternator that we're planning to use. As you can see, it's already painted black, and it came with black, but one thing you would notice is right here, you see how that is um, not painted black? So there is no other way for your alternator to get ground except for how it mounts to, which is gonna be the mounting points right there and there. Same thing for the backside, if you look, they are chrome or they are polished off, so it's basically the aluminum case. It's gonna get its ground through there, through there, and to the front two posts. So with that being said, 
whenever you go ahead and powder coat or paint or whatever you want to do with your brackets, grab that bluey so it doesn't slide off. Put it back inside. So the mounting point for that alternator is going to touch that and that that and that so you want to make sure that is not powder coated or painted so you can tape off this section here or if it's a smaller alternator and you use these bolts in here tape off this whole section is what i would recommend so that way the alternator touches this really good now the alternator is going to make good contact with this so now this bracket is looking for ground so back here um you see where that's at where that will touch in there you want to make sure that's not painted this side of the bracket is not painted the lip on this is not painted this could be painted and then you want to make sure the block is not painted and the lip where this touches a block is also not painted. That has to be a good ground on that one. I'll take that one too. I'll probably do all of them, like even this one down here. Because the more uh, spots your uh, alternator has for a ground, the better. Especially if it's a high amp alternator, like a 220 amp alternator, like the one we have. So that's what you want to do. Now, there is different types of alternators that have a separate ground, like the one in the Chevelle. So let me go ahead and pop the hood on the Chevelle and show you that one. All right, so here's the alternator on the Chevelle. As you can see, it's also black. I'm not sure if, the, I think this is powder coated, not painted, but there's a power output there of the alternator and you can see it has its own ground right there. So that is grounding the entire case. We run that ground wire from there to the block. So it doesn't matter if everything else is painted, powder coated, and um, everything that's touching the block is powder coated, the brackets on stuff. It doesn't matter because this one has its own ground. If you do not have an alternator like this that has its own ground, you could make a ground like that. Like just uh, take off this bolt and put a ground wire there. I do not recommend that because the ground wire might not be thick enough. What I recommend is what I said, cover up the parts that are gonna be grounded and then you go from there. Let's go back to the truck or the El Camino. So we're gonna have to look for a different bracket that fits. I think I found one that puts the alternator up here and it puts the um with well, alternator up here power steering up here and it's a lot higher that should be about the same height maybe a little bit higher than this which should work i'm gonna go ahead and order that one guys a few moments later all right guys so we're back with a newer kit or the newer bracket from ITT billet as you can see this one mounts the alternator off to the side and it puts the power steering up at a higher angle before the other one was down here obviously we're going to clear the power steering box so this is where we're at now this bracket does fit the bigger alternator that we have. This is a truck alternator that has been converted over to a four pin design. So all we gotta do is power it up and we should be able to um, get the correct voltage output um, depending on load. But as you can see, um, there is two different types of alternators. So just be aware of that. The other bracket we had had the option for this one or the smaller one. So if you're gonna use this bracket, make sure you get the truck style alternator, which is a little bit wider. Um, you can see it's got different power steering pump. It's still the type two power steering pump, but it has the um, reservoir built in. So we're gonna go ahead and run this. I'm gonna get it powder coated. After I get it powder coated, I'm gonna show you guys where you don't wanna powder coat at to avoid having issues with your alternator. The brackets are back from powder coating. So you can see where we chose off to tape off. So that way we have bare metal showing. So these two bolts here are gonna mount to the actual head. So I'll make sure we get a good ground there. Same as these bolts here, they're gonna mount to the head. So I make sure we get a clear, uh, uh, no powder coating there, so that way we get uh, a nice ground there. Also here, you can see the alternator's gonna mount here. So this will be grounding out. On the other side, you can see the inside was also taped off. So that goes there, and that will be basically hugging the alternator, clamping the alternator, which will give the alternator um, case a good ground now if you remember the alternator i think it's over here let me grab it real quick if you remember where the bolts go through it was uh had no paint on there so that way it can have a good ground here it is so if you notice the alternator that's where it bolts down and you can see there that has no paint so it's a good ground so let's go ahead and mount this up and then you can see what i'm talking about so I got everything mounted up. You can see what it looks like. I think it came out pretty good. You can see I even did um, the lines for the power steering. This up here is a high pressure power steering hose. It comes down here to the high pressure port. That's our low pressure, which goes up and it goes into there, feeds to the reservoir. So that's our return, it goes up there, 
power goes up there. Everything looks clears fine. The pulleys clear fine. Everything's loaded. So that's all for this video, guys. As always, if this is helping you out, make sure you guys click on my buttons, help me so or support the channel so I can keep making these videos. Um, up next, we're going to do the fuel system. And then in the video after that, we're going to do the fuel tank and the fuel pump itself. So you guys make sure you stay tuned, subscribe, hit all the good info, hit all the good the buttons on the side, and I will catch you guys in the next video.